Hello comrades! And this is a car that you all by now are familiar with, but here, hey, what's this? Well, this is something if you are on the interwebs are also familiar with. And today we are doing something special, namely we want to compare the, well, I wanted to say current pinnacle of the McLaren, but that's kind of P1, but now this is the current pinnacle. So to the previous Super Sport series, am I right? Is it called the Super Sports? It's the Super Series. I think it's, yeah, I think it's interesting comparison and that's why I'm interested in it because you have the LT, which is hands down the most exciting car that I've driven. Yeah. Um, when you want to talk about racing it on the track, you don't have the hybrid technology to deal with batteries to empty. It is an absolute blast. But then we have the 720, which is more power, better throttle response better active suspension, supposedly better handling. I've had it on the street on the way to the gas station and it's definitely quicker than the LT. It's hard to say how much until we drag race them, but um, I can tell you that seat of the pants is definitely a quicker car. Is um, it literally quicker to the gas station because the consumption is more? <laughs> Misha, that's definitely what it is. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, you know what's funny is that a comparison that I can make is that the 720, the engine note reminds me of, the, of my 488. Mm -hmm. it, it has the same whine, a similar sound to it. Um, interior, the visibility is great. You guys have seen all the videos with all that stuff and that's all fine and great, but I think I'm really interested to just see what it'll do on the racetrack. Yeah, because that's why we are at the Nürburgring. Because we can talk about, yeah, how amazing, how comfortable it is, but in the end, those cars, their main purpose is to be driven hard and mostly on the racetrack. And of course you can probably argue that 720 is maybe built as a GT. I think it I think it is, but you know, just driving it a little bit, it's got good feedback. It's got good it's got good brake feel, it's got good pedal feel. You can feel what the tires are doing. Um, under power you can get a little bit loose and you really feel what the car's doing. So I think it's a pretty neat mix. Exactly. And I mean why would you have an active aerodynamics on the GT in the first place? So I'm very excited. I'm you're not gonna hear from us about the radio. All I need to know is how to start it. And how to get it in uh, active mode and track mode. And yeah, I think that's the only thing that you need to know about such a car. Yeah, inside, pretty luxurious leather GPS. I hope, honestly, that they improved the GPS over the previous cars, but I'm pretty certain they did. Uh, we'll we just had... assume they did for this purpose, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So I think today's objective is not about lap times, it's about to compare the cars, how do they feel at turn in, how do they feel a little bit of the limit, high speed cornering, what can you feel under braking, so on and so forth, more just to get a feel for the cars, compare them in that way, we'll do probably four laps each, we've got a full tank in each car and that's about all you're going to get, and we have two hours to play with them, so. Yeah, it'll be nice, after that maybe some street driving to see how they feel like on the street. to play with us then, that's fine. Good, so two laps. Actually, Robert did four, two before I got into the car. So what do you think of it? Well, just today alone, like you said, we did. I did four laps in the 720. Took a little bit to get used to it just because it is, really it is a lot different than the LT. Um, I'm still quicker in the LT than I am in the 720. Well, you have like, what, 7,000 kilometers of experience on Nordschleife with the LT? That's kind of what I'm getting at, so I'm yeah. used to the car. Um, the difference between the LT and the 720 is that the LT, when you're kind of at the limit, whether it's braking, mid-corner, wherever you might be, the LT 
kind of skids around. It's a little bit more, yeah, I hate to say that with this kind of car, a little bit more analog if you would. You're feeling what each corner is doing in a different way. And with the 720, you really feel the downforce. But when you get on the limit or close to it, you really feel the suspension and it's almost soft in a way. And it's not really a bad thing, but I think that's how they designed it. You've got this active suspension, so when you're mid-corner and you're losing grip somewhere, instead of the car letting the wheels kind of skid around a little bit and the car move around, the suspension's actually dampening and doing a lot for you, so it's a feel that you really have to get used to. And it probably took my third and fourth lap before I started feeling it and maybe appreciating that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, still not 100% sold on it. I think what this car is going to do, once someone gets into it, it's going to make an average driver very faster, driver. very fast. Yeah. Whereas I think the LT is going to let you feel, if you understand how the car works and you're able to drive it, it's going to let you have a little bit more playfulness with the car and kind of slide it around. For me, I'm on the fence of what style I like more. Well, I can tell you I definitely like the LT more right now, but yeah. um, but the 720, if you were just to jump in it, you're going to be a lot quicker. Yeah. I don't, I'm not giving this back with the car. This is That's our hard earned. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I must say I confirm because on the fourth lap, on my second lap, his fourth lap, we went actually a lot more smoother and faster. So it was really a big question of getting used to the car, getting used to all the suspension, getting used to the aerodynamics. Speaking of aerodynamics, this car has like shitload of aerodynamics. They told uh, us about it uh, during introduction of the car. So one probably one of the most discussed points of the car are those headlights a lot of people think they're hideous i kind of well i found them strange i do really appreciate them now but the point is it's function over form there's a lot of error game going on here and going back to my point of aerodynamics uh this car was scraping in a lot of turns because of big yeah aero. i mean we hit we hit the uh we hit the compression at um tier at about 245 yes. and it scraped hard and that's that's a mix, I think, both aero and and, and a soft suspension. So, if I would have to describe this car, that would be actually something like 675 GT and not LT because it's actually pretty damn fast. But it's GT-ish, especially this particular car has the GT seats. Can you get them with bucket seats? You can get the same exact seats. So the same exact seats as this. So. That was definitely the thing that I was missing in the car because of the amount of grape after, and downforce. After four laps, my back hurt from holding myself upright. Yeah. And you'll see we have an onboard video where you'll see when we're taking the right at Bergbrick, mm -hmm. I'm leaning way into it like this, and you'll see it from the camera mode. Yeah. I'm basically centered over, yeah. the, um, yeah. over the navigation screen taking that turn. So this is actually a funny paradox because with the with the bucket seats, if you're gonna use that as a GT car, it's gonna hurt you back on the street, and the GTC is gonna hurt you back on uh, on the. But yeah, I'm really positively surprised. This is actually the car has almost the same exact spec. I think that we're definitely not done with this car driving it. Um, you know, if if you're coming from a 650s or a 570, without a doubt, this is the car to have. Absolutely. If you're coming from a 675 LT and you really do track the car all the time. I don't think it's the move to make, um, without a doubt. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking for speed, ease of speed, and a car that just it, it downright handles, this is definitely the way to go. Well, let's do a bit more of a stupid test. Well, how, let's open up the trunk. What's the? How much can you fit in it? Can you call it the GT car ish? This is just the one. Oh, all the safety, dude. That's why it was scraped everywhere. Andy's got a glass bottle in the front. <laughs> Andy. Is it just water or is there something else inside? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. Okay. Russian water. Uh, Russian water. And that's why we were so rushing on this on the track. Yeah. Thank you. Well, you can put a suitcase in here. It's pretty much similar to all the other McLarens. Yeah, I think so. Nothing to complain about. So the only difference is that here you have a latch. And there you don't. Uh, pretty similar. Yep. Oh, and another thing is if you look at obviously the sills, now we're getting into more reviews. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The ease of getting in and out of the car. Yeah, this is this is my like my largest point because this car still has like I believe first generation carbon top. Yeah. The 570 has the second, this is one that has the third generation, most importantly has the door. So just for illustration, if you can hold it for a second. The getting in part. Full wolf of Wall Street. That's kinda okay. The getting out part. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of trained to do this, but... You're damn good, Misha. Sorry, but... But here, what I like here, if you're clumsy and you have bad back or something, you can just more or less stand in here. Or if you've been on the racetrack in this car. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, you just go in here and you kind of glide. 
Ta-da. I want to see you get out. Just Can you glide out? Glide out? <laughs> <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> This car is definitely amazing in terms of accessibility. Your girlfriend will have no problem. If you're a poser, then I have bad news for you because you cannot show the engine. So, yeah, no Lamborghini style here. But look at those doors. Oh, yeah. That's even like butterfly doors. Yeah, I don't know the last Lamborghini I've seen with that much door. Okay, so my verdict at the end of the day is, I kind of mentioned it earlier, is that this is an amazing car from the looks aspect. Definitely one of the best McLarens that have come out yet. Um, from a driving aspect, I think you know that I'm going to say this, that this car in an LT version is going to be truly phenomenal. Oh, yeah. All, all the downforce, the power, the throttle response is, is much, much better than the LT. Um, the throttle response is really there. Um, but if you want to say this car right here, I think it's definitely the best car in its segment right now. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, I've, I had the 488 GTB. There's no comparison between the two. Yeah. The suspension, the handling, the downforce, the turn in, the, the, the feel. This is definitely the um, best car in its segment for what we're looking at anyways, if you want to talk about driving on the racetrack and everything like that. But I drove it from the racetrack to the gas station twice. And um, actually the engine note sounds very much like the 488. Mm -hmm. It's got the same whine and the, it's, a, it's a very similar tone inside the car, um, but this is definitely a better car. Yeah, can you put stuff on the back as well? Yeah, it's a little, it's a little. Uh, that's cool. Little luggage tray. That's very nice. So that's really, actually, really like a GT-ish car because mm -hmm. the 570 GT has that thing on the back. Yeah, except you can't open it. You can't open this one from the outside. No, true. But if it, if this is gonna have a LT version, I guess you have to lose the air scoop because I don't think you're gonna fit fit anything there. But let's put this this way: if you take this car compared to the 570s, this car base price is 246 euro, and then the 570s base price 185. So you're talking 60,000 euro. Mm -hmm. There's no comparison. I, I don't see how you could not spend the extra 60,000 euro to be in this car. Yeah, if you're already spending 180 or 190,000, and you know that you're not getting into a a uh, 570 new for less than 200 210 anyways and you could put similar options to this maybe you could work yourself out 50,000 or shoot just to get in this go base options and uh for that for that 40,000 euro 50,000 euro there's no reason to go with the 570 yeah. but no it's a, it's a great car had an absolute blast with it i think that um like i said if you're looking for something that can do everything daily driver um track car this is it we we obviously put the trofeo our tires on it so we did yeah. that this morning just so that we could get a similar comparison um so that's obviously going to play a big factor they say that the new corsa the old corsa was junk but they say that the new Corsa is as good well let's put it this way it can get the same lateral g's as the trofeo r but i first of all don't believe that and second of all i think that that might be the case for two or three turns mm -hmm. and then after that you've got a a, a torn up tire on your hands yeah. But this, these tires, we did four laps back to back to back with this car. They actually, the, I will tell you one thing that I noticed is that the temperature control on this car for the tires was actually a little bit better than the LT. I'm taking more and more air out of the LT tires, mm -hmm. but that could also have to do with I am carrying a little bit more speed in the LT. So possibly that plays a part in it as well. Very, very good car. It gives me something to think about. There's no doubt. I guess we can say a big thank you to the group. Thank you, Andy. And if you want to buy this thing after we've been abusing it on the track, <laughs> call him. No, I don't think we abuse it. I mean, it, it really handled well. One, yeah, it's only had one careful owner, but no track time. No, not at all. But no, it's actually it's actually a really good car. And this is a, this is the, the car that really could handle that and, and is capable of those kind of track days without a doubt. Yeah. We did today in two hours. I did 11 laps in the LT. Yeah with um, I think nine different passengers. Mm -hmm. So it was literally come in, change passengers, and then get back on the track. Every lap was uh, you know, a very quick pace and it just ran and ran and ran. There was no issues with it. So um, a lot of people have said that they see oil temperatures going up and everything, but today in the afternoon was relatively warm and we literally hot lapped it and it had no problem at all. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with the, with the uh, 720 four laps back to back to back it just ran perfect the whole time so i mean if you do four laps back to back that's over 30 minutes yeah of just straight running and that's that's really not too bad and 80 kilometers yeah if you figure most track days that people do 
you know, most track days that people do do 15 minute sessions or 25 minute sessions or something like that. Yeah. And the Norwich life is not, you know, necessarily easy on a car either. Mm -hmm. so. And a while later, we put the car back on the lift to change the tires to its stock. And that gives us a perfect opportunity to spot some interesting details. So first thing we put the stock tire sizes are 305 width on the back yeah. and a 245 on the front. On the LT, the LT has a 235 tire on the front, same Trofeo R tire. One thing that I noticed was like ice curva, the LT pushes a little bit. And as it understeers, it actually skips. And that's one thing that I noticed in this car, even if you push just as hard through the turn, that's one of those things where this softening suspension actually really improved was that type of turn, a rough turn. And that might have a little bit to do with the 10 millimeters more tire, but I think has more to do with this uh, more innovative and more advanced suspension, if you would. Then we have a, like Misha said earlier, slightly upgraded disc. The brakes felt fantastic. Yeah, this they're is, they're single piece milled caliper. This isn't my car. So you can see in the video that I didn't push it quite as hard as I might have pushed my car. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of turns where I would come in a little late, hit the brake a little bit harder and see what it's capable of and the, the damn car stops. It's very nice. The suspension, we can see lots of toe arms. Is that carbon fiber drive shaft? That looks, looks like, like it. it, yeah. Yeah? No, when you get closer, it doesn't. It's hard to say. But anyhow. Doesn't matter. There's a lot of fancy stuff in there. It looks nice. Yeah, I like the plates underneath, the canards on the flat bottom. Yeah, this was something I was checking out. And I mean, talk about a low-tech solution that's actually absolutely badass. So this basically is taking the air, diverting it out, and creating a low pressure zone here, which just tremendously adds to the to the downforce. And know? it's so simple. Yeah, it's basic. Yeah, and here as well to direct the more air to the brakes. Just the, the simple things that they've done in addition to the rather advanced thing that they've done are yeah pretty pretty cool. This is something you could do on any car. Yeah. You know, really if it's got a nice flat bottom underside. Yeah, so if you look what you fight you get a lot of is go underneath and you see this air is gonna come here, right? And it's gonna get caught by the wheel and it's gonna get thrown out here and right out. Yeah. And that's just gonna create it. I mean, you noticed that when we were hitting 260, 270 kilometers an hour, the thing really was just kind of sucking down to the road. Yeah. And I think at the end of the day, the more that I think about driving it, the more that I think about the experience. Dude, you killed a butterfly. Oh, I'm sorry about that. So the more I think about this car driving it and how it, how it responded and how it felt, the more I do like it. And each lap I liked it more as I got a, a feeling for it. Like I said, I'm not the type of person who's just gonna jump in a car and be right at the limit because I have to get used to the car and get a feel for the car. But the more I drove it, the more I liked it, the more I look at it, the more I think about how it responded. I definitely can appreciate it for what it is tremendously. I do still like the slightly pl more playful manner of the LT for a fun car, right? If you're just trying to go out and have a good time and feel the car and feel the response, I think that, that the LT is gonna give you a little bit more excitement. This isn't a replacement for the LT. This isn't a competitor to the LT, yeah. but I wanted to compare the two because this is what we do with the cars. Exactly. For me, the, the whole thing of driving this car is the only time we drove it on the street was literally to the gas station and back, and that's it. And I mean, that's really what I want to do with the LT as well. I want to go to the gas station and shots fired. I want to go to the gas station and then I want to go back on the track and that's it. So it's a, it's, it's a neat comparison. Um, we might get on the Autobahn in a little bit and you'll see that this car is hands down faster than the LT. It's a, it's a properly quick car. Well, it has 50 horsepower more. It does, but I think the torque, I, I think it's got a lot more torque as well. You're getting to a point where when we're, when we're talking about speed, um, the, it's almost irrelevant at this point. If you think about how much faster a 918 is than an LT, it's like, when, what opportunity are you gonna get that if you're going from corner to corner? Um, so you're on Dodinger Hoa and you see 320 instead of 310. Yeah. You know, um, but from going through Hatzenbach, that power does nothing. Uh, going over through Schradenkreuz, yeah, okay, the run up to Schradenkreuz, you're going to see a higher speed. But if you're just out there for fun, you, you don't need to hit 300 kilometers an hour going over that hump. It's just yeah. getting insane. So, yeah, it's a, it was a lot of fun. Great car. It was a good opportunity. And like I said earlier, it gives us something to think about. Absolutely.